Hello, I'm Mark Ells, Barnstable Town Manager, and this is my Town Manager communication for September 21st, 2023. As, as normal, I start with our budget action calendar, which is in place for fiscal year 2025. Uh, the action items in the budget calendar include an upcoming Town Council School Committee joint meeting. It's our annual meeting that we hold. Um, the, the second Town Council meeting in October, that's October 19th. We've also distributed our budget instructions for FY 2025. Um, and we'll begin to prepare our capital and operating budgets moving forward. All of our information can be found on the Town of Barnstable website and within the Town Open Budget um, that's on our Town website. Our Natural Resources Division is pleased to re report that they've secured their Massachusetts Endangered Species Act permits, a MESA permit, uh, for raking Craigville and Colville's Beach. Uh, the permit allows spring beach cleanup, as well as every other week beach raking in July and August. Further, the town will have the opportunity to accomplish emergency rack removal uh, after storms, when drafting the permit, staff made sure to claim all present and future events and activities associated with beach maintenance. Uh, and the MESA permit is good for five years and will allow for beach raking and beach activities at Craigville and Colville's. It's a five-year permit, so through 2028. And this winter, Natural Resources will be proceeding well, with the other permits that we need for next year at Douses and Kalmus Beaches. The Local Comprehensive Planning Committee continues its efforts to update the town's local comprehensive plan. The committee is comprised, uh, is comprised rather, of representatives of all seven villages and members of several town boards and committees. The town is seeking to appoint additional members to the committee as it begins phase two of the planning process. A few of the positions have been vacated and that's why we're looking for additional committee members. The town is looking to, div to diversify re representation on the committee to ensure its makeup is, is reflective of the community's population and is therefore seeking applications that will represent the diversity of our community. If you're interested in participating, Please complete the application found on the Barnstable Local Comprehensive Plan we, um, website. And you can also return it to the town manager's office. And we're looking to hear from people by October 6th. The application can also be found at the village libraries, um, at the Youth and Community Center, and at the Barnstable Adult Community Center. The committee is appointed by the town manager, who due to the importance and far-reaching impacts of the work to be undertaken by the committee, will request that all appointments be ratified by the town council. Same process we did when we created the committee. The Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection approved revisions to Title V and watershed permits on July 7th of this year. Filing of an application for a watershed permit is the next step in the process for our community to determine future actions required under these re revised Title V and watershed permit regulations. And on, on, on September 1st, 2023, the town of Barnstable filed its application for a watershed permit. The application consists of a request for a watershed permit covering the entirety of the town. And if you remember, we have five watersheds in Barnstable. Um, they, they, they are the north side and uh, Barnstable Harbor. That is not an impaired watershed. Uh, but then we have, from the west going east, we have Pompanesha Shoestring that we share with um, Mashpee and Sandwich. We have three bays, which we share with Mashpee and Sandwich. We have uh, Senevo River 
and uh, East Bay, which is entirely in Barnstable, and then we have Lewis Bay, which we share with Yarmouth. So the four along the south side are all impeded, subject to this, and um, so just to give you context here as to, you know, what we're looking at in our permit and asking for this nitrogen-sensitive area designation, um, the, you know, so again, it consists of the watersheds covering the entirety of the town and its identified watersheds, which I just went through, in accordance with our comprehensive wastewater management plan. We're in receipt of a letter from DEP on September 14th that states that for a community such as Barnstable that has a final nitrogen total maximum daily load, you hear the acronym TMDL, um, the nitrogen sensitive area designation is the same as the date of the reg when the regulation was promulgated, which was July 7th of this year. And as stated above, we filed our application and we await review by DEP. The letter also notices the town um, that the requirements for enhanced nitrogen removal systems for new construction will begin on July 8th, 2024. I'm sorry, January 8th, um, 2024. And the requirements for existing septic system upgrades will commence on July 8th, of 2025. We anticipate that the outcomes of the application the town filed for a watershed permit may impact how these dates will impact our property owners in Barnstable. But we await further discussions with DEP and we'll keep the town advised as we progress on this. This, this merits everybody's attention because this impacts every single property in the town of Barnstable. The Department of Public Works provides the Town of Barnstable with resource, um, water resource management planning, and they do it in coordination with our water districts in town. The DPW has completed a new source evaluation for 2019 for drinking water in Barnstable. The specific focus of this study is on the Hyannis water system, but the information is important for long-term water supply in our entire community. Uh, we receive a lot of questions about the Hyannis water uh, system and division. Again, that falls under uh, the Town of Barnstable, DPW. Um, and they're asking, are we purchasing water from abutting systems? Um, the Hyannis water system is not purchasing water from abutting systems. The system's functioning in compliance with all regulatory requirements and providing sufficient drinking water at this time uh, from its own supply wells. As explained in my last town manager communication, the water deficit that is discussed in the new source evaluation report that I referred to earlier um, is for redundancy purposes in the event that we need to take a water supply well offline. This is normal operations and prudent management, uh, and therefore this is what we're planning to do as we move forward with managing our public water supply in Barnstable. And again, um, this merits the attention of the public, and uh, thank you for the questions, and I'll continue to provide information as I move forward in my communications. The Town of Barnstable Department of Public Works Solid Waste Division, in collaboration with Barnstable County, is holding a household hazardous waste day on Saturday, September 23rd, 2023, from 9 to 12 at the transfer station uh, in Marston's Mills. All residential property owners in Barnstable are encouraged to participate. If you do not have a current transfer sticker, please be able to prove that you're a resident um, or you live in a residential property in the town of Barnstable. If we, you know, if we think back to our water supply and protecting it, and I'm going to talk at the end of this a little bit about emerging contaminants, making sure that we don't just dispose of hazardous materials um, inappropriately is critical because we live on top of our water resource here on Cape Cod. It's a really important day. Everybody, please take advantage of it. The Town of Barnstable Council on Aging, the Friends of Barnstable Council on Aging, Barnstable Police and five fire districts are holding the second 
55 plus community safety day on Thursday, September 28th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Barnstable Adult Community Center. This event will bring fun, educational and safety resources to our communities, older adults all in one place. Public safety and community partners will provide residents, uh, our 55 plus residents with real world tools and information to keep them safe in their homes, online and in their neighborhoods. Please participate if you can. I referred to this a minute ago, but as discussed in the last town manager communication, PFAS, the forever chemical, will remain in the forefront of our discussions. We've been advised the proposed regulations are under development at Mass DEP that will have significant impacts on Cape Cod as we draw our drinking water from the aquifer we live on. Every resident of our community should be aware that as detection ability and regulatory thresholds advance relative to these emerging contaminants, it is not only products such as fire foam that, that introduces these chemicals into our environment, but it's also household items that we as consumers commonly use. PFOSs are in cookware food packaging, stain resistant carpets and clothing, some cosmetics, outdoor gear, even dental floss. And that's not the entire list. That's just touching on some of the products that we use all the time. We'll continue our municipal education of the public of what these emerging contaminants are, where they come from, how they impact us, and what we can do to remove them from our environment. Many residents ask me questions regarding, you know, water supply wells, um, specifically Hyannis, uh, because that was one of the first places that the state required a municipality to test, and we found PFOS in those wells. Um, that's not the case any longer. We've put on filtration systems, and we have no detect in our wells in Hyannis. Um, but now, you know, across Massachusetts, across the country, uh, public water supplies are finding PFOS, not because of a point source like a um, like a fire foam that that may be used in a particular location or uh, a manufacturing plant that may produce or use components um, that ultimately result in the introduction of these chemicals. It's us. We use them every day in our homes. And now the detection limits down at parts per trillion, um, we can detect this. And we anticipate regulations being issued um, that will prohibit that. Uh, not at your home but in our water supplies and at our treatment plant. So um, those are the questions I get from our residents. Where's this come from? Why, why, why is this in the treatment plant? Well, it's in the wastewater treatment plant because it's in the water. It's in the water in the ground. It's in the water in the pipes. Um, and where does it come from? Well, it can come from you know, a, a, a source like a fire foam, and it comes from us. So I'm focusing on educating us so that we can go out there and remove these from water resources and that we can also be aware that we expose ourselves to these products directly. You know, you can ingest, you can inhale, it can be absorbed through your skin. So take the time to become knowledgeable about these the consumer products that we buy every day that contain them. We plan to continue to discuss this in future communications to better inform our public as we move forward on this important matter. Thank you for your attention to my town manager communication. Hello, Kelly Culpe from the Department of Public Works, and I will be walking you through our water resources management update. First, we will take a look at some recent initiatives as part of our CWMP. The first, as previously reported during town manager communications, is that we have officially submitted our watershed permit application on September 1st. The application is currently in review with Mass DEP, and we will continue to share updates um, to the extent possible. 
Additionally, we are preparing to submit our CWMP annual report to the Cape Cod Commission along with all required data. This is part of our 208 plan consistency determination and it's a requirement that we submit this annual report each year. The report will be available in full on BarnstableWaterResources.com by the end of this week. We are also working through revisions to our homeowner's sewer connection guide. This is going to be a guide that will be available as a digital PDF as well as um, a printed hard copy and will be available to property owners who are expected to be part of our first connections um, this coming spring 2024 as part of the Strawberry Hill Road project. It'll be a living, breathing document that we can update as needed and will be available on BurnstableWaterResources.com as well. It really is gonna be a blueprint for folks to help walk you through the connection process and walk you through any anticipated costs as part of sewer connection. Next, we're gonna look at active construction. Sewer construction returned to the roadway after Labor Day on September 5th. We began with a small closure on Finney's Lane from Route 28 to Great Marsh Road, which has since been completed. And as of September 14th, we have been back in the state highway. This work within Route 28 has required a single direction detour of westbound traffic. And we have utilized Strawberry Hill Road and Finney's Lane for that detour. Next, we'll be moving into the uh, phase three portion of this Route 28 East sewer expansion work. And that is anticipated to begin this coming Monday, the 25th. This will require a single direction detour, which is essentially gonna be flipped. We'll be detouring eastbound traffic, utilizing West Main Street. More information to come, including a media release and app notifications. We do plan to have two crews working on 28 throughout the fall, and we'll look at that schedule in more detail on the next slide. Additionally, the Finney's Lane pump station, we continue to make progress as all below grade sewer work is now complete. So essentially what you'll see is the building being constructed above grade. So let's take a look at the next several weeks of Route 28 East sewer expansion work. Again, just keep in mind that this is an anticipated schedule and this includes both sewer and water related work as part of this project. You'll see the light pink dashed line. This is the work that is ongoing this week. We anticipate conclusion of this portion of work on Friday the 22nd. This, is, this work is generally comprised of sewer laterals, so those su sewer service laterals being left at property lines identified across that project route. Then you'll see the blue portion of work, which we're anticipating um, starting the 25th and running a full week through September 29th. You'll see two portions of blue. This is where we'll introduce the second crew on Route 28. And this is where our traffic management plan will flip and detour eastbound traffic down West Main Street. This is a combination of sewer force main and gravity sewer work, as well as what you'll see in the green, which is sewer force main work as well. And that is anticipated to be October 2nd through the 6th. So same detour of eastbound traffic down West Main Street for the portions of blue and green work. Then you'll see red. The red is indicating all of our remaining scope of sewer and water work that will need to be completed throughout this fall construction season. As of right now, the anticipated time for that work to begin will be sometime after October 9th. And as we get closer to that portion of construction, we will include um, updated traffic management plans and press releases as necessary to communicate impacts throughout the roadway. But one thing that is important to note is that you'll see in that red portion, there are uh, there is a section of Finney's Lane that is part of the Route 28 East project. It's from about Telegan Trail up to Aquacket Lane. That portion of Finney's Lane still requires some sewer construction. So just keep in mind that although the majority of sewer work was part of the Strawberry Hill Road project and is complete, we will be returning to Finney's Lane as part of the Route 20 East project. And it's that very targeted section between Telegon Trail and Waquaket Lane. Next, we'll look at the Strawberry Hill Road sewer expansion project. As previously reported, all of the sewer construction for this project has been completed on time and on budget. We do, however, intend to return to a portion of the project route for the sewer service riser construction. We're anticipating this construction will happen sometime between late September and early October. And again, as, a, as previously reported, all of that work will be occurring um, off the roadway, within the shoulder, within the right of way, and it's for a very specific targeted section of properties, um, generally south of Route 28. Once that work's completed, we do anticipate first connections for sewer 
to be available this coming spring 2024. This also leads us to the question of restoration. Vineyard Wind does own final restoration of Finney's Lane as part of their host community agreement, and we anticipate paving of Finney's Lane from Waquocket Lane to Route 132 to occur this coming November. There's a few different reasons, as you saw on the previous slide, we're really playing with a logistical puzzle right now. There's a lot of different work that needs to happen in the roadway, especially in Route 28. So we wanna be cognizant of keeping Finney's Lane open as we're detouring traffic on Route 28. Additionally, Vineyard Wind is completing their final testing along the project route. So with all of that in mind, we anticipate final paving of Finney's Lane from Waquocket Lane to Route 132 to begin in November. Additionally, the Strawberry Hill Road Pump Station, we continue to make progress as we await electrical service for the pump station, which is anticipated to be completed this fall. Now we'll shift over to the Centerville Village Sewer Expansion Project. As previously reported, we have the 75% sewer design plan. Uh, our team in-house is completing review and we'll be meeting with the consultant and designers to continue um, the final efforts on that design. That also includes efforts to site pump station locations and associated easement options along the project route. We'll continue to keep the public updated and look to be hosting public information sessions in the near future as we continue to advance this project. Route 28 West, as previously reported, is also in preliminary design and survey work continues along the project route. This project, as a reminder, will allow us to expand sewer from Finney's Lane to Route 149 on Route 28, I should say, from Finney's Lane to Route 149. So it really is gonna serve as a backbone for much of our westward, westward expansion of sewer. Similarly to the Centerville Village Sewer Expansion Project, we continue to review sewer alignments and efforts to site pump station locations and associated easements. We'll be able to keep our public informed as the design of this project advances. Additional sewer expansion projects and design. Again, we've looked at many of these projects in previous reports. Finney's Lane Neighborhood Project, Old Craigville Road, Old Yarmouth Road, and Shoot Flying Hill Road Neighborhood Projects are all advancing throughout design. Currently, right now, in terms of milestones, Old Craigville Road, Old Yarmouth Road, and the Shoot Flying Hill Road projects are wrapping up survey efforts. We anticipate most of the survey efforts for those projects will be completed sometime between this October and this coming January. All of the information on these various projects and their statuses can be found on barnstablewaterresources.com. So if you take a look at that site and you look at phase one projects, you'll be able to get more details on where each of the projects fall in our implementation timeline and what status they're in, whether it's preliminary design, survey, or active construction such as Route 28 East. Now we'll take a look at the water pollution control facility. Upgrades at the solids processing facility continue to advance. We've installed septic receiving station pipe work, which you can see in the photo in the bottom right hand corner. Um, the pipes are actually being painted as we speak, that's in progress. And then four out of our four sludge stor storage tanks have been fully rehabilitated. We've also installed a grit pump for our septage and the SCADA automation work has begun. SCADA is actually the computer system that helps um, essentially operate all of the various equipment at the solids processing facility. So a lot of major milestones being made here as we look to wrap up and bring substantial completion to a close by January, 2024. As previously reported, the nitrogen removal and headworks improvement program um, continues to advance. We have a conceptual design for nutrient removal in review with our team at DPW. And we've also submitted our SRF application for this project as part of a clean water, as, as part of um, the clean water projects. And our effluent disposal evaluation, we are still contracting for the next phase of work um, and we will be providing updates very soon. Lastly, looking at water quality monitoring. Cyanobacteria monitoring is ongoing through September Currently, as the date of this report, we have one public health advisory at Parker Pond in Osterville. Our estuary monitoring program for the summer 2023 season has come to a close. We'll be supplying information and data uh, to the appropriate parties. And a great place to look for more information is actually with the Cape Cod Commission. They have a, a fantastic map where you can take a look at um, various estuaries um, and watersheds in their current uh, water quality data. And then, Looking at the ponds and lakes monitoring and management plan program, 
Lovell's Pond Nutrient Diagnostic, Diagnostic Assessment and Management Plan Report is in progress. We anticipate delivering this report by late fall 2023, so this coming fall. And then the Mystic Lake alum treatment. The town has been working on contacting potential consultants to complete the permitting phase so that we can move forward with this alum treatment. We'll continue to provide updates on that project and all of our water quality monitoring initiatives across our estuaries and ponds and lakes as needed um, through barnstablewaterresources.com. That concludes our water resources management update. Thank you.